Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pink Shade. It's Thursday. It's Pop and Bravo on Thursdays. That's what I'm talking about. And I have the king of all pop culture knowledge ah. and Bravo. It's Ryan Bailey. Hey, Ryan. What up? It's it's. Uh, I saw you. Uh, I saw you a month ago at the TLC. We on the boats with all the the 90 Day Fiance cast members, and we sailed. We sailed by the Statue of Liberty with 90 Day Fiance cast members, which was so. That feels like a fever dream. Wasn't that incredible? That was so neat. I mean, it, it really was neat. It was bizarre, but it was neat. Yeah, I really, um, I loved it. And I, um, I'm going to click my little thing here, mirror my camera. Yep, that's better. And I just, uh, I loved it. I really have that in my notes to talk to you about, to see like, like, because you've never, I don't know if you've ever been to one of those TLC parties. It's different than going to a Bravo party, right? Yeah, it's, it, it's completely different. And I mean, just for the audience, it was just so bizarre because you're in New York, you're on this kind of like beautiful two-story boat, and then you're with the 90 Day Fiance certain cast members, so you're already kind of, it's just, and then you're driving by the, or sailing by the, the Statue of Liberty, which is such a joke, I mean, like in terms of 90 Day Fiance, of coming right. over to America, I was like, this is so on the nose, and at the same time, I mean, I, I mean, I loved it, I, I, have a, I got a 90 Day Fiance pillow out of it, I got a... <laughs> uh, I got a caricature drawing. I mean, you got a makeup just, bag. You got a makeup. Yeah, I got, bag. A, I got a beautiful makeup bag. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, that's what we do. That's what we do it all for. And by the way, you guys, Mary and Mary Payne and the reality gays, they they had like a whole shot list of content to get. And I'm I'm just sitting there like sweating. Uh, I mean, it was you guys were incredible. I mean, you were you were in your glory. Well, we're we're happiest when we're down in the mud with our 90 Day Fiance stars. And listen, nothing gives us uh, TLC podcasters more joy than seeing David and Annie, Lauren and Alexi. I mean, you know, you can't you can't beat it. You know, it was so interesting. Um, like Yara and Jovi were at the last one I went to, and they were so interesting to watch because she is such like literally looks like she's on a pageant stage at all times yeah you know yeah and miss debbie yeah. was there you know so that one was really fun too i saw yara and jovi on a red carpet last week at this us weekly event and yeah i was talking i was interviewing somebody so i didn't get a chance to talk to them but i wanted to talk to them so badly because i've never met them in person and uh the only person i did get to talk to from 90 day was i talked to shekinah and that oh was, my God. Uh, how was that? That was, that was interesting. Cause I was like, Hey, how was it like actually eating meat that Sarper put his hands in raw meat? Um, and she wouldn't tell me if they're still together or not, but it was, I mean, it was, it was, it was wild. I asked if she wanted to be on Vanderpump rules. She said, no. Um, how was, was, how was, was her new, how was her new nose? How did that look? It looked okay. great. It looked, it looked really great. It was, I mean, no complaints. I mean, she looks she looks like somebody on reality television, if that makes sense. Well, she looks like like what he said was everybody's trying to look like each other. She's trying to look like a Kardashian. And he's he's even he's like, I don't want her to look like everybody else. Like she looks great the way she is, you know, except for well, she must like she she must weigh 138 pounds. But besides that, I don't want her to change a thing. <laughs> no, he, he, he looks like if you put all the filters on your face. Like yeah. just like like Max Headroom, that old character. It's like everything's so weirdly chiseled. That mm -hmm. You're like, there's no way this human actually exists. Well, you wouldn't know this, but back in the day when my kids were little, there was a uh, TV show called um, Imagination Movers, and there was a character on there named Ronnie Rotten, and he was like, <laughs> oh, and he was like, like fully in the plans and stuff, and that's exact, and you know, and he had prosthetics all over his face, and that's yeah. exactly what Starbro looks like. Yeah, I mean, it's. It's 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 why it, it's wild to see that in person and it, it with Bravo celebrities to a lesser degree, but still in that same like yeah. Teresa uh, Giudici. I used to think Teresa I was like, oh, my God, she filters her photos so much. And she does. But at the same time, when you see her at these events, she looks exact. I mean, she looks so done up. And I'm because I was like, oh, that's got to be all filtering. But I'm like, no, sometimes the makeup and the glam is filter proof. Like they come yes. looking like a filter. Yeah, I, I noticed that a lot at the last couple of Bravo cons that some of these women are the makeup is so thick and contoured and everything. I mean, literally, Ryan, I put on mascara for this and I put a <laughs> tiny and I put a tiny filter and I'm like, I'm good to go. I'm good to go. I was like, I cannot remember when I was like loading up to, and I was like, oh, Ryan, give me one more sec. I forgot I got to like put on like some colored lip gloss. I mean, I, I cannot imagine having to oh. do that to my face every day. It would take, and my hair, I, it was, I don't have it in me. I don't have it in me. 
No, that's the thing. I mean, you have to choose your battles. And like us, us podcasters, we're out here doing this kind of content creation or whatever we call it every day. And then you do one of these events where you have to go out in public and you realize how how what a weakness that is of mine i'm like i barely have clothes that fit i'm like uh, you know do i need glam you it really throws your <laughs> thought process into a completely different way of thinking and yes. i just can't imagine having to think that way every day i can't yeah. imagine having to think about what you and he, then you even think about like paparazzi which you know a lot of reality stars don't get paparazzi a lot but i mean i can't i can't imagine the nightmares i would go through if somebody caught me on a beach with my shirt off I mean, it would be game yeah. over. I would just, I would retire from like life. I would die if somebody caught me like coming out of a Target and then analyzed uh, like what was in my basket. That would be so embarrassing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so no, I mean, yeah. that, that's why I don't, I, that, that's why eventually we're all just, all podcasters are going to be like Howard Hughes types that just lock themselves away with a microphone and that's it. That's, this is how I see life now through a ring light and a Mac screen. I know. And, you know, here on this um, trip, I'm at the beach. There's no ring light, but I do have a little light in the corner. I'm like hoping that's thrown enough light oh. at my face to blur oh, things just God. enough. I <laughs> When I traveled, I've taken lamps. I've like set lamps up on like little boxes. <laughs> and you're just like, what am I even doing? This is it never is glamorous. There's never, you know, it, like I we long for the days where we can have our own studio and all of this cool stuff. But until yeah. then, it's like a big Tetris jigsaw that you struggle with every day. I told you my computer is set on top of a LaCroix box on top of categories, yeah. and I've got all yeah. the pillows from this bed behind me around to make it less uh, echoey. And then I put this lamp in the corner. It's, it's, and then look behind me, there's like a TV that's not even plugged in. I mean, this is the life. <laughs> this is the life. I, was, I was doing that red carpet last week and I, it was like one of the first ones I've gotten to do where I got to interview people. So I was really excited, but also really nervous. And then you realize like you only have so many hands. I didn't have a camera person. So I have the camera in one hand. I have like the microphone in another hand. And then you don't take into account that you have to also remember what you wanted to talk to these people with on top of you're a fan of these things. So that fan part of you is like, oh my God, it's exciting. There's Janelle from Sister Wives or there. And you're, 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 you're combating all of these thoughts and at the same time trying to hold a camera steady. And it is so, it's an amazing experience, but also at the same time, it never stops being humiliating. You're like, no matter what you're doing, you're still like juggling four things. So you can't specifically enjoy the moment. That's interesting that, so did, did Betcha send you to do this? No, no, they, they reached out to me uh, separately, I guess this, this PR company or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. But they didn't give you like a assistant to hold a camera. You had to hold your own camera. Yeah. They were like, no, no, no plus ones. I mean, so, but next time I would kind of, I, you know, you never know what to ask and you always want to be nice to everybody, but I would ask for somebody next time because it was just yeah. too much to think about, you know? Yeah, I was thinking, like, God, you could have just told Ingrid to come with you. Ingrid could have sent the camera. Yeah. Yo, I mean, it would have been so much better because, I mean, by the way, this is probably not exciting for your audience, but it is just one of those funny things that it never, it never gets easier. It always presents some kind of new challenge. And you're kind of like, okay, I can do that. Or I can, you know, you just like, yeah, I can fit that round, round ball into a square hole, you know? Right, right, right. Listen, Ryan, we can't all be Alex Cooper. Like we can't all. I know that's, yeah, yeah. 100, 125 million dollar deals. We're like, we Listen, got our 100, 125 dollar deal over here. And I was about to say, it. I was about to say, let somebody give me 125 dollars. I'll, I'll hawk anything. Come on. <laughs> they gave me like a thousand dollars. I mean, the thing about those call her daddy and all that, and it's like, she, you know, great for her, great for all of those people. But you're like, oh my God, they put out like two shows a week. They've got a full, I mean, uh, guys, a full production team. They got somebody for everybody. And that's like not taking any way of the glory and the hard work that it takes to get there. But it is funny when you are used to being like close to a one man band, you kind of look at those things and you're like, oh my God, it's like hiking up a hill with 30 pound weights on your ankles. And you're yeah. like, man, if I could just get to that, if I could get to even close to that place, like, you know, like what, what we could do with that opportunity. I, I tell you when people are like, Oh, and then, you know, my producer did that and my editor did this. And then my other editor went through and did that. And then my sound person did this. I'm like, okay, I am all of those people, except I do have Ingrid who helps me with a lot of stuff. And Ingrid's, like, Ingrid's amazing. Truly like amazing. You, yeah. And you have Marisa that helps you with tons yeah. of stuff as well. But I mean, it's like, 
no, I mean, there's nobody here to soundproof this room. I'm on, I'm at the beach and I'm at the beach because we're having work done at our house. So we're like, okay, let's go to the beach for like a week and a half because the prices are less and we can just get the dogs out of the house with the chaos. So we're not like at the beach because we're on vacation. My husband and I are both like sitting at the kitchen table and they're like with our laptops, like looking at the dogs, like, yeah, it's, we're doing the exact same thing in a different oh, location. But that's you know? I, went to, I went to Arizona to see like old friends from high school this weekend, which is like so amazing and so great. Like I had to leave Friday night from like having like dinner and drinks. I had to leave to go back and finish a Real Housewives of Orange County recap. I was like, the, I met like two in the morning talking about Tamara and Shannon on their, their London getaway. And you're like, this is insane. This is truly insane because you know that you can't relax for the rest of the weekend unless you get that show done. And it's really hard to explain to people in your real life what your life has become. You know, you're yeah. like, well, here's the deal. Well, like two seconds ago, before we were about to hop on, uh, Kate, Casey called me and I just um, sent it to voicemail and sent her a text and said, hey, I'm about to record with Ryan, you know, call you back in an hour. And she's like, no problem. Another friend of mine would have been like, well, yeah, you know, no, what- yeah, I mean, Kate, Kate called. Yeah, I mean, like sometimes, yeah, Kate will do the same thing. Kate, but Kate talks to all of us, but I'll just be like, oh, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And she totally gets it. Like we all exactly. get it for each other, yeah. but it is hard to explain. It's hard to explain to my dad or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in a recording. Okay. But now my husband, like just then before we came on, he, my daughter called him to say like, Hey, I drove with my parking brake. Is that bad? You know, kind of a thing. <laughs> and he's like, well, how far did you drive? He goes, listen, mom has to go into her recording. So I've got her for five minutes and we're trying mom to decide. Has to talk <laughs> about love after lockup. So we need you to go. We need you to figure this out. He said, so look, I'm going to have to call you back because she has to go into her recording and we have to figure out what we want for dinner. I was like, these are, in, this is how our, this is literally the whole, my every day. Like, you know, like dad's in a meeting, mom's in a recording, but we got to figure out what we want for dinner. And usually we talk about dinner while we're eating lunch. So that's, that's all my life. Well, I mean, what is the craziest, like, do you do this too? Like the crazy, you'll have those crazy life experiences and then either like anger, joy, sadness, and then you have to jump into a recording. Like, you know, where you're like, oh my God, this intense thing is happening. And then you're like, oh, gotta go, gotta go talk to some Love Island people. We'll continue this in 45 minutes. Yes, that happens a lot. Like if you get like some some terrible news or some upsetting news and you're like, okay, I've got 10 minutes to pull it together. You know, <laughs> to try to be funny and lot, you know, I, 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 I'm able to somehow just like, okay, sometimes you can really rely on the person you're talking to, to like, be like, not today, girl, not, girl, it's, it's, not to, it's on you today. <laughs> this lifting. It's on you. I was, I got like, I had a doctor's appointment today and then I had to go to my ther. I had a therapy appointment and like, it was so interesting. Cause I was, I was talking about podcasting and therapy. And then I was yeah. talking about Tamara in my therapy. I was talking about Ooh. Tamara Judge in my therapy. And I mean, not like, like, let's discuss what Tamara revealed, but it was just the thought of when those things pop up in our lives, we then are asked to like comment on it or talk about it. And you realize sometimes in those moments, even though they're very serious, at the end of the day, you're like this, this another example of like, what has my life become? Like, wait, I have to have a take on Tamara revealing she's potentially on the spectrum, which is, you know, we'll get into, which is wild. But then I'm talking to my therapist. I'm like, this is insane. Like, this is not, I mean, it's real, but it's not real. I can't tell you how many times in a day I will say, okay, well, this is dumb, but it reminds me of on, you know, Real Housewives of OC, they're shaming yeah, yeah, because yeah. of the drinking. So this is similar. I, I will compare things that I'm seeing on my TV constantly to life. And um, somebody will say, oh, yeah, well, I had this guy and he, and he married this woman and she was from here. And so they live there part time. And I go, well, she on the K1 or are they go on the K2 because do they do the spousal <laughs> or the fiance visa? Because if they got married over there, t- technically, if they're married in another country, once she comes over here, she has full citizenship. And people just look at me like they go blank. Yeah. Like, yeah, why are worried you? about you? And I'm like, it's the learning channel. I've learned so much. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I've learned how to like uh, really lance big old uh, warts from Dr. Pimple Popper. Do you know? not talk to me about that show. That's disgusting. Disgusting. Oh, that- you know you know who loves that show, Ryan, that you could talk to all Jake. day early? Well, probably Jake. But I don't know if you know Kimberly and Katie from A Date with Dateline. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kimberly um, loves Dr. Pimple Popper. 
loves. Sometimes that's they, they it has its fans, obviously, but it's like on TikTok, like the first videos TikTok will usually give you are like pimple popping videos just to kind of gauge your interest. Not, and you know, or like, I was I, I was getting like earwax removal videos, and you realize that some people it like it's like ASMR for them where yeah. it relaxes them. But TLC is wild because it has you know, this network has range because it has like welcome to Plathville, which is kind of like a, a family drama that's like really different. Then it has that's TLC which is like relationships on steroids and then it'll throw you a complete curveball with like people like dr pimple popper or like crack my back and you're just like this network is all over the place but ryan everything you said we're learning something we're learning something <laughs> it's the learning channel and when we were at that 90 day party and we had you know howard who's technically matt sharp's you know, boss, basically how yeah. it is there. And then we have Matt Sharp and Chris Colleen, the two creators of all the 90 day stuff. And like I told Matt Sharp, I go, I go, Hey, and I talked to Matt Sharp in third person about Matt Sharp. I go, Matt Sharp, you can't tell, you can't name a show that you have done that I haven't covered. And he's like, tries to stump me. He's like, you didn't cover love off the grid. I go covered it. He's like, <laughs> you didn't cover match me abroad. I'm like, covered it. He's like, you didn't cover prison brides covered it. You didn't, you know, you, uh, inmates roommate covered it. I'm like, you go ahead, Matt Sharp. Don't try to, don't try to trip me up. Oh, I, got I, you. I almost, I almost saluted Matt Sharp. I almost was like, Whoa, I, I didn't even have the courage to go talk to Matt Sharp that night because I revere that man so much, not only for TLC, but I'm a huge love after lockup fan, mm -hmm. which I don't cover any of that on my show, but like, I'm just like, wow, this man has created so many hours of my actual and by the way i almost revere him more because i don't cover those shows like i watch those shows with my heart <laughs> you know like yes, i watch those yes. shows like those are uh, friday nights with love after lockup man i am so invested I, it's interesting you say that because the kind of that's a little bit how i feel about bravo like for me going to bravo yeah. con you know yes i was there you know working but i was also there as a fan because as, i do cover it on thursdays but i don't recap it turn by turn like i do love after lockup and all the 90 days and plathville and match me abroad and all these other like core tlc we tv shows bravo to me is sort of like the glamorous big sister of those shows you know like oh the one you could aspire to be you know <laughs> and so for me it's like going to something like a bravo con like what if 90 day did like a 90 day con oh. how incredible would that be it would be hot mess express left and right well, I'm waiting for the day where, and this will potentially, uh, this probably shouldn't happen legally, is that, you know, how, like on Marvel and DC superheroes, they're separate companies. Like yeah. I'm waiting for the crossover. I'm waiting for the 90 day Bravo crossover. Like I want to see Colty have to do an episode of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills or no. something like, oh, I know it'll never, they, they, those ladies wouldn't let Colty get it within 10 feet of themselves, but a person can dream. I mean, cause that would just be sheer insanity. If you had Angela pop up on Potomac or something like that, it would be insane. Ew. But you think about somebody like Yara, who is very, very, very funny on Instagram and stuff. She's very funny and very funny on pillow talk. And you think somebody like her could, could. slide right into one of those shows because she has that uh, wannabe affluent lifestyle. Yeah, and she's also you know? beautiful. And she's beautiful, and she doesn't mind a boob job or a plastic surgery, and she is good to go. Now, Jovi, on the other hand, I've always had a real <laughs> problem with him and his teeth. i got a real problem with it. But it's okay. She <laughs> loves him, and that's not for me to decide. I want to talk a little bit about um, New York. I just watched the latest yeah. episode. And um, do you think Jessel has new teeth? I think she does. I think she does. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great point, Mary Payne. I think she does actually have new teeth. You, you know, yeah, I do. I think she has. But I will say they're not as bright of veneers as I usually see veneers. So hats big. off for that. They're not yeah, big. Yeah, like it's, yeah. But you do see that, especially I noticed that in the helicopter ride that Rebecca Minkoff and Bryn and her took to go to Aaron's place. For some reason, I noticed it in that scene. And mm -hmm. I was like, but by the way, that makes complete sense too, because usually on those season one housewives in between the break, that's when they're going to do something in preparation mm -hmm. for season two, because they want to kind of keep up with the Joneses and they feel like they have to. And they've probably gotten some sort of discount or just flat out free teeth. So mm -hmm. you always look for what housewives do in the off season, you know, physically. 
I yes, I think so. And I didn't notice it either. So that's kind of a, a testament to that it is just very subtle. And I didn't notice it in the first two episodes, but in this third episode, or is it just the second? Uh this is this is the third. This third. is the, last night was the third. Yeah. Yeah. So when they go to when they go to Aaron's new and improved Hampton's house, when she was standing in the kitchen talking, I was like, okay. I just yeah. noticed it. But so if you didn't notice it the first two episodes, like you said, you didn't either. Then I think that that's the sign of really good work. But it's a sign of really good work. But also, is it a sign that potentially the show is not hitting the way it should? Because we're so busy then Ooh. noticing teeth like, hey, what's going on with the teeth? Like you're just kind of zoned out on the storyline and you're looking Ooh. at like other things in the scene. Well, that could be it could just be that I'm shallow and I notice things like that, you know, because I'm it always could be like, both. It, it's it could like be do both. I. And I'm always like, do I need new teeth? I mean, you know, like that's, um, but so let's speak of Aaron's remodel at her Hampton house. It's so shady that they put you know, the old kitchen and the new kitchen. And literally the only thing different is it's like a marble wrap around Island. Everything else looks, yeah. it was completely fine before it was not like a 1965 kitchen or something. What a waste of money. I mean, I feel like, I mean, that, is this where the Bitcoin is going? I mean, like right. this is. Doesn't right. make tons of sense. Like I want to, I want to really recognize something if you paid money to do it. And yeah, I barely recognize. It's a beautiful house, by the way. So like hats totally. off. But I don't know. I almost wanted to know how much she paid for the renovation. Usually at the bottom we get the ching ching, and I then know, it tells us yes, we did get um, the ching ching of Jenna's two hundred and seventeen thousand dollar car. Yeah, Bentley. It was, it was, Man, uh, that is so much for a car. It really, I, I drive a Corolla and I just never in a million <laughs> years. I mean, I, I really, that kind of shocked me. Not because, because, I mean, Jenna is so classy and artistic yeah, and all of yeah. these amazing things, but I really didn't think she would fall for a $200,000 car. I would almost, cause I don't even think Jenna seems like the kind of person that drives a lot. Like, you know, and she has like the beautiful closet, all of these things, but the Bentley kind of, Took, took me by surprise. Also, me she too. has a kid going to school. She, I mean, not that she can't afford all of this. She obviously can, but it just surprised me. I, I wouldn't think she would care about cars, but she did, I, you know, she did have a Porsche last year. Do you remember that? No, I just remember the old Mercedes that I thought was like kind of cool. And that's like her Hamptons kick around car, but then it died yeah. on her. But so I guess, so she had a Porsche in the city and a Mercedes at the Hamptons, I, I guess. I think that's what I remember. But like, I just, the new Bentley just kind of, it was a surprise. Yeah. Because I mean, if that is your in the city car, that is stupid, <laughs> you know, to drive in New York city with that car. But then even, I just always now think of everything financially where you're like, then you got to pay thousands of dollars a month to house the car in New York. Yes. Like, is it even worth it? Like, is, is it even worth it for a Bentley in New York? No. Yeah. So you do wonder, like, did she just like lease it for six months to like be fun for the, like, I'm just going to have it for so. the season. Yeah. I um, hope so. But Cy has a $107,000 Range Rover. Again, she li she lives in Brooklyn, so she may drive a little more. But that's so much money for a car. And I'm listen, I'm as bougie as you can get. But that's a lot of money for a car. A lot. Well, this is this is that keeping up with the Joneses. I feel like these people feel like they need to like one up each other or kind of reach a certain level to compete with each other. And by Ooh. the way, Cy, I'm still not digging. I, I call her Cy, S-I-G-H. Because I just mm. can't be like, it's like sigh, sigh. Mm. sigh. you know, because I, j even last night when she's getting into that argument with Bryn or the, the whole Bryn conversation, she seems just so angry. Like just, there's like a buttoned up anger, like John Jansen has that mm. I just, it, I'm just like, where, are we? and she's, and also a content creator, which I always kind of get wonky eyed over. It's it. I didn't quite understand it. Like I literally wrote it down. So. Bryn told Jenna that Cy hated Jenna. So I was like, okay. Yeah. Jenna denied it, even though we see her on camera going, that one over there is the one that said it. Either way, the word went around that Cy doesn't like Jenna. And they try to sit down to talk about it. And Cy and Bryn hug and they work it out, but they really don't. But what we're seeing is going to be building up that we saw on the um, flash back on the, when they were doing the um, opening cards at the episode yeah. one. What, what we see is that Uba and Bryn are going to have some sort of disagreement. And I guess right now we're building on it. It's that Uba is like, all of you are messy and you're stirring up shit to fight. Uba, welcome to the Real Housewives. 
<laughs> well, isn't that what Uma we're doing also, here? She introduces the term pigeon 30 times last night, which also then, if you saw the Roni trailer for this season, it was a lot of pigeons. And now we know that Uba is the one that starts calling everybody pigeon. But Uba, yeah, Uba is that classic character who I really like, but it's like that character that doesn't realize they've signed up for Housewives. Mm -hmm. Where he's like, well, what, what is going on here? Like, what, you know, it's like Brynn is clocked in. Brynn is like almost doing too much. And now Uba Agreed. just doesn't understand you know, the rules, not the rules, but the game itself. So she's upset about like, why is there all this fighting? It's like, because you signed up for a show called Real Housewives of New York. And we found out on Watch What Happens Live last night that her boyfriend isn't going to be making any appearances on this season, which I'm kind of bummed out about. Oliver. Yeah, I'd like to see him too. See, I didn't get to see Watch What Happens Live. I was just like catching up. Uh, by the way, we're at this beach house, right? So you, all these beach houses now where we are at Bald Head Island, they all have smart TVs. And then you have to go yeah. on to the app of the cable company, right? So Spectrum is what they have here. So you go on the Spectrum app to get the regular cable, right? If you want to watch something on TLC or whatever, guess what they don't have? They don't have Bravo. ESPN, which is not great for my husband. And they don't have fucking Bravo. And I was like, I hate what's happening. Well, yeah, then we're also everything's so split up with uh, like cable, everything across the board. Why is it so cable hard? Companies, Why? streaming services, like you can never depend on anything. There's always some like little like or you or you go to a hotel or something, and then they want oh, you no. to use your own app and then type in all of your information yes. on every screen. And you're like, I don't even remember my I made it up when I was tipsy. Like I don't even know yes. my password. Yes, yes, exactly. That's exactly what happened here. We wanted to put on Apple. Apple Plus, Apple TV. So to watch something on Apple, I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll add the app. You have to add the app. But the, what this TV does is that they ask you your checkout date. And on your checkout date, they delete all the apps. So the oh, next person okay. has to start over. Good, um, good. Yeah, which is fine. So anyway, that has nothing to do with anything except for the TV <laughs> doesn't, doesn't have Bravo. So I watched it. Hey, by the way, know, this is had, just two podcasters just bitching and moaning, you guys. Thanks yes. for tuning in. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. We get, we get Kate on here. We could go for hours. <laughs> we could go for hours. I will say that I did like, I did like that we got a lot of um, Raquel's backstory mm -hmm. and it was interesting about her engagement. So then, you know, we talk about Mel being a forensic neuropsychologist. So I was like, what does that mean? Those are three words that I know what they mean, but I don't know what they mean together. So basically she's an expert witness. That's what a forensic oh, neuropsychologist oh does. They, like you'll say, hey, well, I've got the Menendez brothers. I need a forensic neuropsychologist to delve into all the therapy and psychologists that have seen them. And then I need you to talk to them as well. And then you, from your expert opinion, say from the therapy they've gotten or the, you know, um, all the things they've gotten, psychological evaluations. And then from my psychological evaluation of that evaluation, plus my evaluation leads me to believe <laughs> this. Yes, they are a sociopath or whatever. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. that's what she does. She's an expert witness and she goes for the prosecution or defense, whoever is paying her and goes in and determines what's what's what what's doing with the brain of the uh murderer or whatnot it's a good job if you can get it you know well you're never going to be out of a job because the world just gets crazier <laughs> um well by the way that ring the the engagement ring that looks heavy and it look i mean it looks like a like a, a big like paperweight or something like that like it was gnarly it was a gnarly no offense i'm sure she loves that ring and it means a lot but i didn't even think it was an art piece i thought it was like a knickknack that you got at like a savers like you know, thrift store. It looks like a paperweight. Yes, exactly. Yes. It. Yeah. It looks like a paperweight. It's not for me. And I don't think she's going to like that five years from now, but maybe she'll just change it. Who knows? We would, but, also, I love that she's in a Ducati biking gang with her fiance, where they're like, like they're in a Ducati bike, you know, yes. she's like we were riding our Ducatis and then we have the picture of all the Ducatis. And you're like, Oh, okay. So this is a rich biker gang. That's what it is. Yeah, not, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, an yeah. art dealing biker gang. Yeah. Um, then we get some of Rebecca's backstory. Now, of course, to me, the most interesting thing about her is that she's a designer. I think that's fascinating. I've seen her stuff not at Nordstrom Rack. I've seen it at other stores. Brent, Brent again referenced Nordstrom Rack this week. I was like, okay, you already made that joke once. We don't get to say Nordstrom Rack twice. And by the way, fuck off. Nordstrom Rack is incredible. And a lot, yeah. Rebecca's backstory. So she says she came from Clearwater and then she moved to, and I, she didn't say she came from Clearwater. I'm sorry. She said she came but from she Florida. Said Florida. 
Yeah. And that's when I, and that's when in my mind, I was like, ding, ding, ding. Her parents are Scientologists. She came from Florida because she was in Clearwater, but she was able to escape. Now, what did you think of this? Her parents said, well, you can't do drugs. We don't want you to ever do drugs, but we will put you on birth control if you promise not to do drugs and you could get on birth control when you're 16. By the way, a kid is going to have sex if they're on birth control or not, and they're going to get what they're going to get when they're 16. What did you think about that? The other women seemed kind of horrified. Yeah. I mean, it, it didn't make a lot of sense to me because my parents were big, like, don't do drugs. I mean, they were like, you know, don't have sex either, but it did seem completely bizarre to me that, um, that that was like a deal her parents made and yeah. they bartered with the, the birth control. Like we'll give you birth control. Like what if she said, no, like, well, then you're getting pregnant. Like it was. Completely... Nope. I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose the life of heroin. Like what? It, These are the choices. Oh, so insane. Like it, it makes, it made no sense to me, but Rebecca is a kind of a big mystery to me regardless. Like I don't obviously come up in the fashion world. So I know she's a big deal, but the Scientology aspect of it already bummed me out because she wouldn't comment on it in the helicopter ride. And that bummed me out because, you know, I think a lot of us listening or, you know, like you guys listening, you know, we've studied Scientology to a degree. We've seen documentaries. We've read the books. I've read Dianetics. She was like, she was like, oh, my advice is to read the book. I read the book. It's hard to make heads or tails of that book, but I've read a lot of other things. She said, you know? read, she said, read a book. Oh, and in my mind, she said, read the book. And I was like, is that Dianetics? No, she said, read a book. And in my mind, I'm like, what's the book? Going Clear? Because I've read that book. I read that book twice. I, me he, too. Leah, Rem Leah, Rem Leah, Rem Leah Remini, she's got a book. Read that book. Mike Rinder, you want to read about him? Look, what do you mean, oh, read God. a book? Read a book? What do you mean, read yeah. a book? Insane. Um, yeah, she didn't know what sorry, she was. My, she phone, didn't... my phone, did your phone just blow up? Uh, no, you know what, Ryan? My phone is in the other room because I was talking to my oh. husband about dinner. No, we, just uh, what happened? Breaking news. Well, I mean, it's pop culture news. Okay, let's hear uh, it. It's very sad. Um, uh, the former One Direction uh, singer Liam Payne died today after falling from a hotel balcony in Buenos Aires. He was you are 31 years old. Fucking no. kidding me, Ryan. No. I just like my phone just went bah, 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 like all these alerts. And uh, that's really insane. Wow. Fun fact, I've seen One Direction twice um, because, you know, I had a teenage daughter at the time. I saw One Direction twice. I mean, I've seen Harry Styles twice as well, additionally. But I, that is horrible. I mean, what? really, truly. I mean, that's uh, – yeah, TMZ's reporting. Um, that's uh, – I mean, that's so many – uh, young, young women. And, you know, like that, that was their first crush. A lot of people, you know, Ugh. oh, my daughter was, uh, uh, she was into Louie. She was into Louie. Um, yeah. They all, it was like the Beatles, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You all had to pick your one Yeah, you know, and she didn't want to go. She didn't want to go Harry like everybody else. She wanted to go. Okay. She, sorry. She sorry to bring the show down. I put my phone wow. away, but it's but like, sometimes you get scared because like after my mom passed away now, every time, like I, I'm always scared. My dad's going to text me something. So I always like have yeah. my phone near and then somebody's go beep, beep, beep. And then you're like, Oh, Oh gosh, somebody passed away. Anyways. Well, sorry. that can't be a positive story. If you fall off a balcony, either you were pushed or you were drunk. I mean, honestly, that's Mary terrible. Payne. I love that what? your mind already went there. Your mind already went. He was pushed or I didn't even think about that. Like, you're right. He might've been pushed. Ryan, he was either pushed or he was inebriated and fell off a balcony. You don't just fall off a balcony. You have to deliberately go off a balcony or you don't know how many times I trip a day accidentally like that. Not off a balcony, not off a balcony. No, not, not yet. Like not, not yet. yet. Oh, oh God. Fingers God. crossed for Anyways, Ryan guys. Sorry. Sorry, Rebecca Minkoff, the, the, the Scientology thing, I I just feel like I want her to talk about it. Like, I don't want her to be like... She's not going to, to, Brian. Me. But like, I, but see, this is what frustrates me. Like, this is what housewives are about. Take us behind the curtain. We've heard so many other things. You do have to talk about things in your life. This is what the show is about. You, you get paid for this. I know right. this person's a big name or a big get, but it's like Jenna Lyons, who I love. Jenna Lyons yeah. is even uncomfortable like sharing aspects of her romantic relationship. And yeah. you think about the old days, and I'm not comparing it to old Roni, but you want these people out here just being themselves. And I, I still really enjoy Real Housewives of New York. I enjoy watching the show, but I want, I want better for it, if that makes sense. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I, you know, I came into it second season, like I'm going to watch it because God knows I'll just watch these shows until they're horrible until they, until they take them away from me. I continue to watch, you know? (laughs) And so I I just like a total addict. So I'm going to watch it no matter what. I don't just like viscerally dislike it. Like a lot of people do. I'm kind of like, all right. And the Aaron, yeah, I think, exactly. you know, like I like to look at Aaron. I think she's like so interesting looking and I like her clothes and I do like all, they all, they have the best clothes, you know, so I like to look at that and I like to look at the Hamptons and, you well, know. You make a sure. great point though. There, it, that's, it's uh, with the audience as well. It's like, I sometimes you'll catch visceral hatred for this reboot and mm-hmm. I don't feel that at all. Like, I mean, like, come on, I've watched a lot of bad reality TV in my day and I don't consider it that. And also I always think with any kind of show, you do need to give it two seasons to kind of, to kind of work itself out. And for these ladies, since it is a casted show and these aren't a natural friend group, they're getting to know each other as well. So it's like, I always say it's like investing in these people. So when their version of Scandaval pops off, it explodes. Like that's what you're investing in is that hopefully they will form these strong bonds when then the shit hits the fan. It really will kind of go South in a really entertaining way. Yeah. And I think that kind of the last thing we can say about this last episode was um, first of all, I wanted to know what sort of $1,800 red light therapy Matt Uba was laying on because I've got red light therapy, all sorts of items that I've got, but I've never seen one that you could lay on. And she said, she said it was the astronauts use this. And I was like, the astronauts are you like, how are they laying on this red light thing? That's $1,800. And what does that even, I want to know more. Like, what does that even feel like? What does it do? I wanted to, but by the way, that's another bad sign when we're sitting there thinking about the red light <laughs> therapy instead of, instead of what they're talking about. Um, well, I'm going to find it and I'll send you the link. Um, oh, what did then- you, wait, what did you think of Abe? What did you think of Abe spending the Bitcoin uh, be- behind Aaron's back last episode? Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm married. You've been married. And can you even imagine if you were just like, oh yeah, like, I mean, we've got, you know, I've got like, from when I worked at WorldCom, rest in peace, when I worked at WorldCom, I rolled over like a 401k. And so it was only at that time, like $6,000 or something, but you can't do anything with it. You have to, you have to roll it into something else. So I rolled it into like a SEP IRA. So like that money has been sitting there for 20 years and it grows and grows and grows. Right. And so every you know six months or so, my husband was like, Hey, that's crazy. That's $6,000 grew to this and the SEP IRA. We haven't done anything with, you don't even look at it, but once a year, it's crazy th- how that money just grows. So I just know that that money is sitting there for when I'm 65 or whatever, I can just get it. But at any time, I guess my husband could go in Spend and just it. take it out. Yeah. Well, how how would I know? And so that's what happened there. She just assumed they had Bitcoin, whatever the fuck that means. They had Bitcoin saved somewhere, and she saw that it had hit an all time high, whatever, and it went in and was like, "Oh, I'm gonna he did pay off my ago, mortgage." Too. He so did she it hasn't years looked at ago. it. Yeah. So, so he like, was lying about this for years, and that was like the part where, yeah, I don't and that think was he was lying of- about it. I think they just didn't ever. She just didn't like look, log into the account. She just like would be like, it's just like if you're if you're uh, got Apple stock and you'd be like, oh god, today it hit, you know, three hundred dollars a lot. When we bought it, I think it was a hundred. Man, we should cash that out. She just like happened to notice it and went to look and hadn't looked at it in years and was like, what the fuck? It's on zero. But I was like, of course it's Bitcoin. Of course Aaron and Abe have Bitcoin. Like I was like, yes, that can makes complete sense to me. Well, it's just like that. I don't know. Are you watching Love is Blind? Of course you are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is like Leo and his NFTs. That's what he sells. He sells a lot of NFTs. Oh, those NFTs. And those NFTs, like I was talking about this with my nephew, they are, most of those are worthless now. They were trying to convince us all it was like the next big thing in like digital coin and media. And like it completely, like Justin Bieber spent millions of dollars on these NFTs and they are worth nothing now. Nothing. I, um, anything you want to know about any of those love is blind people since I live in the DC area, I know everything about every one of them. I've done such a deep dive on every single one. I got, I got the price of Leo's house. I literally know where it is. I drive past it weekly. Um, I know where he went to school. I know. I'm just bummed we everything. didn't follow that couple to Mexico. I'm like, that was the one I wanted to see the most is I wanted to see them like awkwardly together. And I'm sure, I am sure she told production like, no way I'm banging this guy. No, way. she and they were like, but then they supposedly it. they supposedly went to Miami on their own dime and like then broke it off later. But I was like, God, when when that was one of my favorite parts of this season was her reaction to like, oh my God, what have I done? Yes, 
And then he's like awkwardly grabbing the back of her head. And she's like, okay, this is really great. He goes, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're fucking hot. And then he says, we don't have to pretend this is something. It's not. You're hot. I'm rich. Let's go. <laughs> By the way, he's not rich. So, um, <laughs> Okay, so Bryn and Uba get into it. I didn't like how at the end, Bryn seemed to be sort of mocking Uba's accent. Yeah. She's going, da, 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 da. I didn't like it at all. I didn't like it at all. And then but Mary Uba, Payne, but that's what I'm saying. Bryn's clocking in though. Like Bryn, I mean, whether you like her right. or don't, like she's trying to like, she's trying to do old Roni. She's trying to be Ramona on one. She's like, yeah, because she's trying right. to get a reaction out of Uba. Like Uba's tr like that. She's throwing something out there and it's just not being received. So it comes off really weird because that energy is not, you know, volleying back to her. How are we ever going to find out what Bryn's real job is? How are we ever going to well, find we can't, out? We can't talk about it because she gets so offended every time anybody talks about it. Right. But by the way, I just, I don't care. Like, and then there was a, a joke. I do. Uh, I care. I a, care. There was, there was a joke earlier in the episode about what was it about some somebody living oh Rebecca I think living with her boyfriend or something and somebody mm. was like oh we all do that we all live with somebody that we don't want to for a place to stay I'm like we can make jokes like that but we can't make jokes about Bryn and where she potentially gets her money and it might be from other dudes like who cares. Yeah, I mean, Jenna and Aaron even laughed about like, oh, I just wanted to make sure you weren't so poor that you could afford the Uber. You know what I mean? Like, I guess you're not yeah. poor. Like they make, you know, they make jokes about it. But like, Bryn should just like lean in. Like, don't you wish you knew who my sugar daddy was? Like, she should just lean in. She's know? jokey about every other thing. Why can't she be jokey about this? Mm -hmm. I don't like the, you know, the gay baiting that Bryn does constantly trying to like rub all over it, just the women that are lesbians. Non -stop. Like stop. It is nonstop of like Jenna, just one time. That's all it takes. Like we get it. We get it. And I feel like there should be a legal law where she is forced to hook up with Jenna now. Like you have to, <laughs> you just have to. You've said it enough times. So now you have to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, I want to talk to you really quickly about Potomac because I dropped off at the end of last season and I know that's terrible because I just said nobody could ever take me away from my shows, but just last the end of, end of last season, it got so like, I was like, I don't want to, uh. so I probably didn't watch like the last four episodes. So I don't understand about this new girl, Kierna. And what the problem is. So something happened at a GNA, which it means Giselle and Ashley, something happened there and she was in a fight. Can you explain? Do you remember? Um, yeah. I mean, the tension between Kierna, Ashley and Giselle, uh, Kierna was excluded from her birthday event by Giselle. Um, right. And the, it seems like it was something from last year that Kierna was upset about because Kierna goes over to Karen's and Karen goes, oh, oh I can't. Karen was, and Karen's and like, Karen why weren't you invited? Her. Yeah. And so, and then it seems like it was something that happened from last year when they had that like fist fight that happened at the end of last season of Potomac that I didn't see because I dropped out. I'm so sorry. I mean, I did watch the end and I still can't really tell you. I mean, I kind of was probably glazed over. I mean, my thing is just, it's just funny watching Karen try to get her on her, not get her, but like trying to like butter her up now, you know, in, in her ongoing war with Giselle. But I mean, to me that God, I, those characters still to me haven't fully come to life. So mm. I can't, you know, it's like those kind of, to me, periphery characters that we're waiting to find out more about. So I'm sorry. I cannot fill you in uh completely at all on Dang that it. because it didn't didn't fully make sense to me okay somebody let me know what that fight was about i thought i'm um, sure you'll have plenty people will be like oh my gosh it was this fight between these people so i think that the thing about the mia and the gordon and then ink her her short king that the paternity suit there i don't listen again this is happening on love after lockup we have a story of a paternity thing and i'm like i don't like it. I don't like it because I think that eventually your your kid who's six or 12 will see that this was on TV yeah. or the moms will be talking about it. Did you, can you believe so-and-so's friend's mom did this on TV and it, their kid will get wind of it. And I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it for storyline. If that's something that's really happening in your life, keep it to yourself. It's not cool. I don't like it. Yeah. I mean, and cause we also have so much just with the Gordon Inc. relationship alone, that you don't even need to bring up the paternity thing. Yeah. I think it doesn't even need that because, you know, just that relationship between Inc. and Mia alone and Gordon's anger about that, to me, I mean, that's the story right there. You don't even need to bring the kids into it. 
Yeah. I did think, um, so I was looking up this Stacy, the new girl, Stacy, who's so gorgeous. So I was looking at her. So the ex is this German guy. His name is Thiemo Rusch. He's senior VP of sales for Audi. <laughs> nice work if you can get it. I mean, damn. So yeah. he's real cute too. So um, Kira and I, we don't know about that. But they're not. Um, but they're not doing the hippity dippity, Stacy and him. Like, isn't that the character no, that they're not? No, no, that's her ex husband. I'm talking about. Oh, that's oh, got it, got it, got it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, the German, the German. Uh, um, so that makes sense, right? That's why they're back and forth to Germany yeah. and the United States. And then, um, because I was like, how does she afford this house that's obviously like in Arlington or something, and then afford a DC apartment and a house in Germany? What what's going what's doing with the ex husband? So I figured that out. Her new man Greg I looked him up. Um, um. Okay, no, no, that's Kieran's new man. Okay, so so Stacy's new man is TJ. That's the no sex till marriage guy. Okay, that's so I looked him up on Instagram. He has less followers than me. Okay, so that's <laughs> that's right. Yes, please follow. That me. means he might be a good person. guy. I mean, like, listen, if you don't have a large social media following, that might mean you're a real person. He left his job as a talking head on QVC to go do good in the world, which you never know what that means. But it does appear that he literally goes to like Ghana and underserved countries to do things with children. Oh, my God. So I do, I do think he is just like a good Christian man doing good things in the world. I mean, way to go. Way to go, Stacey. Yeah. What I loved at the end of this latest Potomac episode was that, first of all, GNA has shifted from athleisure to a brain tumor foundation. It's quite a shift. Well, it's quite well a shift. but it's, it's in the honor of Giselle's father. So like you bring that into it, which then, I mean. But, yeah, what does that have shift. to do with athleisure? Nothing. <laughs> you want to be comfortable. I don't know. You want to be comfortable I, when you're sick. I don't. So anyway, that was super interesting. That was terrible to find out that her dad was diagnosed with a brain tumor and died 12 days later. That's. Horrible. Crazy. Crazy. Oh, wait, what did you think about Karen having her, uh, you know, like, you know, being awarded on the same night? I mean, that's like real. That's kind of really wild that that was even set up as a storyline. And listen, I know, but like when you're honoring somebody's father, whether, it, you know, it's for a weird athleisure wear or whatever, that's like, to me, wild. I don't know. To me, that was just like, oh, Karen, really? Well, Karen, like, like, like Giselle said, I got the initial invitation and Karen wasn't on it. And by the way, this is a local news station. WSA nine is like honoring women. It's not like the Kennedy Center honors. Okay. Yeah. And so that's, that's great that she's being honored, but it was interesting that Giselle goes, yes, of course. I mean, this Real Housewives of Potomac will get invited to these things, these local events. And she said, I saw it. She wasn't on it. So I guess then she called and asked to be on it which is, you could totally do. And, um, I guess with her 10, you know, charges, um, it's, uh, and then the, and then the lady's trying to like rush across town and they have 24 minutes to get from here to there and DC traffic. I was like, I and loved then we, it. We, we had the cliffhanger of like, you know, Giselle watching them walk in and going, no, 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 no. Like, is she going to, are they going to get kicked out of the athleisure wear? I mean, they're going to get kicked out the, of this event. The athleisure slash brain tumor party yeah i mean yeah, yeah. Well, so anyway that that was interesting at the end she's like security she, she's like she's doing like a karen she's calling over security yeah um the the interesting thing about karen too in the dui is that it's really interesting to compare her to shannon bador you know because just of the way that they approach these things like shannon is you know kind of like obviously a mess and like I did something so wrong and I feel so guilty and all of this stuff. And Karen, you know, you can't talk about it. Don't make a joke about it. No, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, head held very high. And I think that's like the interesting thing. If you kind of compare the two ladies on Bravo that had issues with alcohol in their cars. Um, so it's really too. And by the way, Karen was at that red carpet event the other night and I got to oh. talk to her. I was so excited to talk to her, but like you, you, you know, you couldn't ask her anything about that at all, which I'm did like, that's fine. Did, were you, you know? told not, you were told not to ask anything about it. Yeah. We were all told not to. Yeah. Yeah. You were told. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other, any other people tell you not to ask them about something? No, like any, in fact, in fact, I kind of like, I put this, like this, the brakes on things where I should have gone for them. Uh, not gone for them, but like should have asked maybe potentially tougher questions because 
there wasn't restrictions, you know, like obviously with the sister wives, I wasn't going to bring up the recent death. Um, you know, I wasn't going to do like a, a joyous night. Of course, Yeah. So there are things that, you know, that of course, but like with Jax, you know, we talked about the divorce on the vat. We talked about the divorce with Brittany and moving on and Brittany, we talked about her dating, um, Lindsay, I, from summer house, I got to bring up, like, do you and Carl have a scene like, you know, mm -hmm. Sandoval tried to have with Ariana last season. Right, so you got right. to ask these things, but it was like, it was kind of that Karen, I think was one of the only ones of like, don't ask about this. So did her PR people come in like right before she did and say, Hey, Ryan, Karen's going to come up and talk. Don't ask her about the DUI. Or was it just like a blanket no, thing like, to everybody? No, it wasn't a play. It wasn't like, Hey, everybody gather around. But the red carpets are so, <laughs> they're so kind of insane. Like, like so much energy, so many people walking around. So there is so much noise. So it's just like the publicist is following Karen around. And like, before you talk to her, be like, Oh, just, you know, by the way, no questions about this. Okay. And I was like, Oh yeah, of course not. Of course not. It wasn't uh, like a big thing. It was just like, they kind of just tell you really quick. Well, it's like you said, you know, you've got to, you have to have good taste. You're not going to like ask one of the sister yeah. wives something about somebody dying. I mean, you're no. not going to, yeah. You, and you wouldn't like, if Giselle was there, you'd be like, tell me about your dad dying. How was that? Like, you're not going to, you know, yeah. exactly. like uh, Kyle Richards was there and I wasn't going to ask her about Kim, you know, recently having like some mental health issues and stuff. I mean, she brought up her sister, not in terms of that, but something else. But I wasn't going to be like, how's your sister? Like, you'll see yeah. certain people do that. I just I don't I couldn't do that. You know, I wouldn't either. I would be I would like maybe think I was going to do it and be like big and bad. But then but like you see me at that 90 day party, I act like all that I've been singing the praises of these people for years when I'm just been making shit fun of them I know. relentlessly I know. and, and oh by the God. way we get invited and they know that we make fun of them relentlessly and they invite us anyway so you know oh God. that that was my that was my fear at that and then they originally said that tom sandoval was going to be there and i was i was sweating bullets about that one because i was like i don't know what i would do i don't know like and but john jansen and alexis bellino were there and they walked and Thankfully, I was talking to somebody else when they came through and because I was like, what do I ask? Because they oh, that was sorry. That was not just Karen. I heard Alexis say we want to keep it positive. We want to keep like so anybody they talk to, they said they want to keep it positive, even though I think they said a couple of things about Shannon. But in my mm -hmm. head, I was like, what do I say? like I've gone so hard on them and I think rightfully so. But like I was like, what do I ask? And then I was like, oh, I'll ask them if um, next season, if she comes back, would they be willing to put their wedding on camera? Would they be willing yes. to do a wedding season like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like positive enough, but you could get something out of it. Yeah, I think you have to think about that before they walk up. And you have to, I always assume that nobody has ever heard of me or listened to the podcast. So I don't go into it assuming that any of them have ever listened. The ones for the 90 day people, the ones that I know have listened, like have like reached out and I've talked to them. You know, yeah, no, yeah. but sometimes though you get the vibe that they they have caught wind of something. So they heard like, yeah. sometimes you'll get a vibe where you're like, This feels a little weird, it feels like you might be upset, but that also could just be, you know, my ego, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, let's uh dip in really quick to what we're thinking about Salt Lake right now. So, Salt Lake just came back, and I have to say that, um, after the first episode, I listened to uh Danny Pellegrino's podcast, and he made a great point, which was it's so great that Monica is not there because if Monica was there, that's all the focus that would be, and we wouldn't get these like primo moments. Of is it a costume? Is it not a costume? And Mary Cosby saying, I don't put rolls in my purse. Or you had, why, how dare you think I'm poor? And oh, you look thin. You look thin. She looks thin. I'm like, that's Mary Cosby's go to. You look thin. Um, because what she's trying to say is you used to look fat. And just the little moments that we're getting that I'm loving so much, we wouldn't have any of that if Monica was there. It would be so yeah, much focus on Monica. It, 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 uh, this is what I've been saying about it. It, sh it shouldn't work as well as it does. Like, because mm -hmm. there was such anticipation, like I was still, I was one of those people where I'm like, I want to have Monica come back. I want, like, this is about conflict resolution. Monica still has a lot of things like that I'm confused about that I feel like that we need answers to still. Like, there are so many little things. So I was all for that. So when she wasn't, I was like, that's a bad sign. But I got to tell you, this season is fantastic. It's my favorite like OC, I'm really enjoying, but in a different way. Like it's it's really kind of serious and it, it brings your vibe and mood down really. But oh, like Salt Lake is so ridiculous. It is yeah. so it like Mary Cosby, where who gave Mary Cosby the happy pills? She is 
Like Skippy Do Skippy Doo Da, like every episode now, she told Whitney she loved her last episode and hugged her. And I was like, what? How did Mary Cosby become one of my favorite characters on this show? And that's why I always tell reality stars, never give up. You can always change <laughs> public opinion. Like, I love it. Like, I this season is so Meredith being so offended by bath bombs. I love it. Love it. I mean, there is Bronwyn, a fantastic first season housewife that's already standing up for herself. Lisa Barlow, completely ridiculous, but I love that she commits to being Lisa Barlow so hard. Yep. All of these things. I always say it's like a cross between a David Lynch movie and a John Waters film. Like it's ridiculous mm -hmm. and it's bizarre. Nothing fully makes sense. I mean, Brittany with the Osmond story about breaking up 17 times over seven months. I'm loving, I, I love, I love all of it. Like Whitney, like almost crying that she was in the Harley Davidson museum, like all of these little <laughs> moments they made, like they had to increase tourism in Milwaukee immediately because they That's made the point, Davidson, right? Like the yeah. best place. I mean, I think I'm enjoying the Milwaukee trip more than I'm enjoying the London trip on OC. I have to tell you that the whole Milwaukee thing, I'm like, are we now getting paid by the Board of Tourism of Milwaukee? Like, that's what's happening here, right? And that's fine. But I, yeah. I think the thing about with Brittany and the Osmond thing, I think that the lady so quickly saw through it. Like, this, she hasn't dated this guy in a year. She just has used him to be like, hey, I'm dating an Osmond. And my, lot, my, my whole storyline can be that we're breaking up. But the ladies have kind of quickly picked up on like, okay, this guy's not your boyfriend. It was like... If he was your boyfriend, it was two years ago or something. And they yeah. have kind of, they have quickly picked up on it, which we already have already seen in the news. Like, no, they were never really an item. Well, but but he's like, yeah, you're did, using did, my they, Osmond name, which is hilarious. Did they quick? Did they really fully quickly pick up on it? Because I still think they, some of them just think he's kind of just like a typical dude, like sliding in the DMs of brow girls and stuff like that. Like, I mean, are they fully cognizant? Like, I think Heather is. But like, I don't know if they, I just think they think Britney's like a kook wanting to be loved by like a, a by the way, it's so perfect that it's an Osmond. Yeah. Like what a fun family to choose of like, you know, they're, they're the Kennedys all of a sudden. I love yeah. it. It's funny too, because I don't think anybody under my age of which you are slightly under my age. I can't imagine <laughs> anybody under my age knows who the Osmonds are. Do you know what I mean? Because that's such I, a, it's such a seventies thing. Yeah, I, the uh, the Osmond Lane that the 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 fancy houses they call Osmond Lane because mm -hmm. yeah, like last week on the show I said that's the new reality show like behind the gates of Osmond Lane like I I mean that we got to do that I want to see you guys T M don't steal that from Ryan Bailey that is Ryan Bailey's idea and I don't want any <laughs> network to come if you, he's got to be an or, executive or, producer <laughs> here yeah here yeah here's the deal you guys can produce it just bring me on in some capacity and then we'll, we'll work together. I think that's a great idea. I've, I've told this on the podcast before, but I'll tell you because you don't know. So my husband, um, you know, is 10 years sober. He was in rehab 10 years ago in Utah, um, right by BYU. And the so the, where he was is called Cirque Lodge. And so they have the lodge up top where like the rich and famous, um, like Lindsay Lohan types go to treatment. And then if you're a regular person, you go to what's called the studios. And so, but everybody at the lodge, by the way, has to come to the studios for group and all that stuff and, and therapy and whatever. And then they just go back up to sleep at the lodge. So, but the studios is where everything happens. They have like the, one of the largest indoor ropes courses in the world and all this stuff, but it's called the studios because it was in fact, Donnie and Marie's studio. <laughs> so when you go in those gates of Cirque Lodge, it says D and M <laughs> on the doors and you open it up. They stay open. I mean, it's, you can leave whenever you yeah. want. But yeah, when I found that out and then when you go in to the, um, to the studio space where, which was the sound stage, which of course people have never been on a sound stage. And I've been on a couple, not many are, it's so cavernous and huge. You think like, if you see like the set of friends, like it's just that one little thing. No, it's huge. No, it's so huge. This, yeah. the set of Donnie and Marie was huge. So this, they of course emptied this place out to make this ropes course. And you go in there and you're like, wow, this is where Donnie and Marie sang a little bit of country, a little bit rock and roll. <laughs> and I'm and the, obviously there because my husband is in treatment for alcoholism. And I'm yeah. like, whoa, I'm more interested in the history. I love, I love <laughs> that. You know, you know, there, there's a, like a, a battle being happening with your husband and you're like, yeah. Donnie and Marie. Amazing. What? If I would have known about Osmond Lane, I would have done that on my off time. I would have gone over and oh my God. instead Could of looking imagine? at the mountains, I would have done that. Could you imagine if we get a Donnie and Marie appearance this season of Salt Lake? Like if they're invited to one of the parties just randomly, if like, and then Mary Cosby in a scene with Donnie and Marie. 
that's it. The world has ended. Yeah. The world is. By the way, you know, I heard that we were we're here, and uh, Keisha, one of my co-hosts, said to me, "Oh, did you hear that a UFO landed in DC?" I was like, "What?" <laughs> so then I looked that up, and I was reading my husband and some of the nobody stuff that would even TikTok. care. Nobody that would that would be like the third weirdest story of the day. And he's like, "Seems like that'd be on the news." I go, "Or it wouldn't, because they don't want you to know." Oh my God! Do not pink shade is a conspiracy theory podcast now. That's what this has turned into. Anyway, literally, I was trying to show my husband some of the videos like from TikTok. I was like in the bed. And I was like, look at this. And he's like, I'm not. I'm reading my book. Not looking. He's like, if they're coming to get he goes, he goes, they're, he goes, if they're coming to get us, they're coming to get us. Let's enjoy the beach. <laughs> I had a buddy that was like super into aliens and stuff like that. And he was like all parent. I'm like, so what? How does that affect my life? Like if they're going to come and eat me, they're going to come and eat me. But until then, <laughs> who cares if they exist? Let's just assume they exist. What does that change in our everyday lives at all right now? Nothing. How do you feel about um, Renee on this uh, this ninety day before the ninety days with Renee? No, it's yeah, it's before the ninety days. Renee and Chidi, and she's oh. he's blind and she's insane. She scares the <laughs> hell out of me. And by the she way, know, uh, you, she knows about. So the I heard. That, yeah. Well, I heard they're not even making the reunion because like she just won't keep her mouth shut. The, the two of them have both been all over social media. Like she'll say something and he he'll write back like a four page, you know, manifesto about her, which how is all he, true. I'm not trying to make a joke. How does he, who's telling him that she's doing Like, how is he seeing all of this stuff? I mean, he met her on Instagram. So, I mean, I guess oh, he's, true. Yeah. you know, like he, stop you, chitty, get chitty, get off the comments, get on, stop scrolling the comments at all. That, that lady genuinely scares me. Like when oh, yeah. I, at first, when, at first, when they told her story, when she was like feeding the chickens in the first episode, I was yeah. like, Oh, this is beautiful. And yeah. then she had the scene with her mom and the friends. And she was like, mm -hmm. Uh, Chidi will come around to my way of thinking. And, you know, like, I was like, oh my God, she's talking yeah. about vampires and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. mm -hmm. there's a couple every, like, they all kind of gen generally scare you on these shows, but like, mm -hmm. she especially scared me. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty dark. And this uh, past episode, she told him that Earth was conceived by the program and welcome to the program. Nobody well, knew what that, the fuck she's now, talking about. <laughs> well, because so now that, uh, that I kind of believe actually, but. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know what it meant. We were like, yeah, should we yeah, look it up? Yeah. Earth is a program. And no, then we just we no, decided. No, do not look it up. You will be on some weird well, mailing list if you look We're going to be on the algorithm now. But we decided that what she meant was that it's like basically we're, it's like the Truman Show. So like we're just pawns in some sort of weird game. Oh, dude, I'm on St the actor Stephen Baldwin's TikTok, you know, Haley Bieber's dad. Yeah. And he, he's always go to his TikTok. He's he's uh, really turned a corner. He'll always be like, when you see through the matrix, I can see through the matrix. And now I see how the world really is. And it's like the scariest shit ever. Like it, it's I mean, just go take a look at just even one or two of his TikToks. You'll know immediately what I'm talking about. Is he married to China of um Wilson Phillips? No, that's Billy Baldwin. This is ah. Stephen Baldwin from Usual Suspects and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. See, I thought Haley Bieber's parents were China and Stephen. No, Stephen and I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the lady's name. Okay. Because, because so, but Haley Bieber's parents are in that church cult that Justin Bieber is in, and that's how they put them together to get married. But gotcha. then now I'm hearing they're trying to stay away from both of their families. Like Haley and Justin are pushing their families away, which I got to tell you, after watching that TikTok, I was like, I'm on board. Like, yeah, push them far away. And I think that Justin's family has done him no favors, especially with this Puff Daddy information, which leads me into my next thing I want to talk to you about. Yeah. Uh, how much are you talking about that over on your podcast, the P. Diddy uh, we did like a, a We did a big episode where we went through the indictment and stuff and and been a couple. I've been saving it up for another huge Diddy episode because there's so much information coming out. But also it's one of those stories you have to be really careful with because um there are so many uh just so many rumors and false conjecture out there that yeah so many conspiracies and you want to really try to get factual information when it's about that because you know people are trying to implicate beyonce and jay-z and it's like i'm sorry like i'm not you know i'm gonna need proof on these things before i just go blab that to a bunch of people yeah yes i agree with that if you ever do an episode on anything about it please have me on because i'm very interested yeah 
Yeah, well, I mean, if you well, because you used to, I don't think a lot of people know this, you used to go to the freak off parties. Yeah, you know, I used to be young and in wild, the 90s. but it was in but, the 90s, yeah, right. That's that, yeah, in the 90s when I was in my uh 30s. Um, so they wouldn't want me. Um, what do you I think about tur- I got turned away from a freak off party? <laughs> That's a new shirt. <laughs> the new pink shade shirt. I got turned away from a freak out party. Oh God. Um, what do you think about 50 cent making a documentary about the whole thing? I love, I mean, uh, well, there's two, like, I love it. I mean, it's so petty. It's such a housewives move. Yeah. And he's like, we've seen him do this with like, you know, Randall Emmett back in the day, mm-hmm, money mm-hmm. by Monday. So this yep. is like classic 50 cent, but yeah. I, I will say, I hope it's a great documentary. By the way, it's a great title. It's uh, did he do it? D I D D Y, did he do it? Which I think no, is genius. That is not the title. Are you kidding? 100% it's the title. And it's on Netflix. It's going to be on Netflix. Is it's right? going to be on Netflix. Yeah. They announced this a while ago, even before Diddy was thrown in prison. This was already in the works. But my hope is that it's a really good docuseries because I want the story to, I don't want it just to be like, you know, 50, like, oh, you did this and they, like, I want it to be real. I want it to be factual because there's a lot of stuff there that I think people need to be taken through, but the pettiness of it, I love like 50 cent is so petty. I mean, that's, you know, you kind of admire that level of pettiness and I mm-hmm. think love daddy deserves it. And I think you have to be real confident that nothing, nothing about you is going to come out to do something like that. You gotta be real that's confident. The, uh, oh, that's what well, we see that time and time again, the people that are on social media will go after somebody and then they start looking into that person's life and it completely mm-hmm. obliterates their life. Well, we see that on our housewives every season of every show. We're like, yeah. why did you why, why did you sign up for this? Why did you why sign did up you for sign this? Up? You know they're going to look into your shit. Why did you do oh, that? Dude. Oh my god, I was um, uh, I was on uh, Jeff Jeff Lewis the other day, and Jen Pedranti and uh, Katie Janella from OC were on, mm-hmm. and I literally just asked him. I said, "Is this like what what is worth it about all of this for you? Like, right, I mean, yeah. it's got to be nice to have the Instagram followers and to be on it. Like, why is this worth it? Like, I that's the question I ask myself of all of these shows. Is this truly worth it at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. Um, Tamra. Okay, let's talk about Tamra. So I literally just got this information. Like last night, I looked at a little bit, you know, in between looking at the aliens landing in sure. D.C. Um, between that, go look that up, by the way. And so um, between those things, I saw that Tamra just said on her own podcast, Two T's in a Pod, she said that her, tell me if I'm wrong, that her therapist said, you know, a lot of these things I've been talking to you for years, a lot of these things uh, indicate that you could have, you know, aut- autism spectrum disorder. Um, and then she just has said like, well, 15 minutes later, I had to record like you and I were just talking about sometimes you're in the wrong headspace, but you got to clear that out to keep to the subject at hand. And she was just talking to Teddy and said that her therapist said that. And of course people came after her because people are also very against her right now in the season. Um, if somebody else would have said that it probably would have been a different story, but do I have that right? And then I want to hear your thoughts. Well, you have, you have a little bit of it wrong in that. She literally okay. said, I got back from my first therapist appointment. Oh, first therapist wow. Appointment. So that's like, the she big- hasn't been in therapy her whole life. So the first therapist, I mean, I think she maybe probably been in that, but she said to Teddy first therapist appointment. And she said, oh, he thinks I'm on, you know, on the spectrum and da, 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 da. you know, and she got emotional. She started crying and she said, listen, you know, I have this lack of empathy. I am not all of these things, which, by the way, has nothing truly to do with on the spectrum, because I know a lot of people that are on the spectrum that can actually have empathy. And so you're you're already in a, such a delicate topic already, because I yeah. think we all have friends or family with kids or, or, you know, that, that, that deal with this issue. So it's very personal for so many people. So she went on, said all of this stuff. She had not talked to her husband yet. She, you know, like she literally came in and started talking about this. So it's really dangerous that message because she had such a big platform, right? So that's huge. And I'm all for anybody going out to seek mental health treatment. I think it is something so brave, so amazing. And I think, you know, Tamara hit the nail on the head with like these things that are wrong about me, which I'm like, yeah, that's awesome that you can see that good, but it doesn't make you. And just so you know, a therapist can't diagnose you in one session that just, you have to go through a battery of tests and she had to, uh, I think she immediately started getting blowback did a statement, did an article with People Magazine, um, kind of going further. But then even the People Magazine article was like, Tamara claps back at people that are negative about, you know, and it's like, guys, 
stop making it about other people. People are going to be upset and people have a right to be upset, but also that's what we do. Tamara knows this because Tamara goes into battle every season on these shows and she sometimes acts so repugnant towards other people that it's hard to extend sympathy. We have to remind ourselves to be sympathetic and empathetic towards her because sometimes we don't see the same coming from her. And I think- Well, Tamara that's what I just a, said. That's what I just said. Yeah. If somebody else said that, we would be like, oh, wow, that's pretty interesting, right? Yeah. But because it's her and because how awful she's been in the past. And sometimes there are seasons or times with her where she seems like, okay, Tamara's all right. But, you know, currently the way she's acting on our television, it's not okay. So we don't have, we don't, we do have to remind ourselves like, wow, if this is a real thing she's going through, super interesting and whatnot. But because it's her, we don't, we can't even well, remind ourselves to feel that because we're annoyed with her. My thing too is that like Tamara knows this at this point. Like she does keep information to herself. Like we saw it even with the FBI scene. Like she like blurted like, how's the FBI going, Ryan? Right. Like she had that information for months. So she's able to keep things in to a certain point. I think Tamara knows at this point, and this is why I'm so curious about why she did this, is because she knows she potentially should have kept that for a minute to herself or maybe even tell Teddy off you know, off mic. Yeah. And I think that I think two things is that like when you get into therapy and like somebody says like, oh, this is why you're feeling like this. It could potentially be this. Sometimes our brains get so excited that there might be an answer that you just run with it. You're like, oh, oh, that's it. That's why I'm feeling because you want an answer so badly. And therapy is like really hard work as well as any kind of diagnosis. You have to go through a long process of like really feeling uncomfortable before you feel better. So yeah, the thing is, if she hadn't mentioned the on the spectrum stuff, I think a lot of people would have so much more empathy and sympathy of like, good for you. Like what, like, you know, because even what she was acknowledging how she behaves, I thought was dead on. I think it's just that fact of putting that out there immediately enraged people. And then I think it's just such a waste for Tamara then to potentially come down on other content creators and stuff like that, because Tamara knows she does the same thing that, that content creators do. It's like, we, we say things, we say our really strong opinions about people and yeah. so sometimes like that's that's the arena that you set up. That's the arena you play in. Um, and my thing is, I just hope she actually continues on with this journey. And I hope she keeps it for herself and her family until she really figures out what's going on, because I think something should be private for for everybody. Yeah. I, yeah. And by the way, Tamara is also a very, very successful podcaster. I so, mean, huge pod, a huge yeah. clap. I mean, like, like, I mean, this person isn't desperate. Like, like people are like, oh, she needs money. No, she doesn't. Like, mm -hmm. I, I guarantee you she doesn't. She is doing better than she ever has in her career. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that, you know, that's probably a lot of pressure to keep up with. But also you, I think, can fall into that trap. And I'm not saying she's doing this is that you start monetizing your personal life in weird ways, or you start going like, Oh, this is what they'll, Oh, they'll talk about this. Oh, maybe this will get picked up as a big story. And I don't know. I don't think this is necessarily happening, happening with this because I don't think she expected the blowback, but I also don't think she expected the blowback for how she treated Shannon. I think she thought people were going to support her for right. her behavior toward Shannon this season. Right. I'm not, I didn't. <sighs> um, okay. What else are you watching? That's fun right now. What are you watching? Uh, let's see. Watching, you know, before the 90 days, love after lockup, uh, Roni, Salt Lake, Potomac, uh, watch what happens live below deck sailing yacht. Um, I just watched the monsters, the Menendez thing and the yeah. Menendez documentary. Me uh, you know what I really enjoyed? Uh, there's like a six part docu-series on Netflix about, uh, Miss, uh, Vince McMahon, Mr. McMahon about worldwide wrestling, which I'm not even <laughs> a wrestling fan. Wait, yeah. no, no. Can you hear me? Out? I'm not even a wrestling fan. I don't watch wrestling. But the way they talk about it in terms of like showmanship, it reminds me so much about the housewives universe because it's all about storyline. He was like, yeah. Oh, we created this crazy storyline where my daughter was a character and I had her marry a wrestler, even though, and then, and then I fought my daughter and like, you're like this insane, <laughs> like, you know, but the, like he, they treat it so seriously. Like each year would be like a different, like a different era for the WWE. So I weirdly really enjoyed that docu-series um let's see oh man i watched this it's gonna come out in 2025 now but do you remember that podcast scamanda yeah okay so that was supposed to the docuseries was supposed to premiere this week on abc yeah they got they got more nfl football games so they pushed it to 2025 but wow. i got to see the first episode of that which was really really good and then last night i watched 
two episodes of something very similar. It's on Peacock right now. It's about um, this writer, Meredith Finch. Is it Anatomy of, Li- Anatomy of Lies? Anatomy yeah. of Lies. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I was yeah. really, I passed out to that last night. I, I haven't finished it yet, but I was really, it's very Scamanda-esque, but that's over on Peacock. Yeah, it's interesting. I just was talking to um, Landon Bryant, you know, Landon that has Landon Talks, the guy that's the Southern, he's Mississippian yeah. like me. And I was just talking to him and I think he's going to come on Pink Shade to discuss Anatomy of Lies. Um, I and it. I was just, and it didn't even come on my right. So I just today look that up on Peacock. I go, this looks right up my alley. I haven't oh, watched Grey's Anatomy in years, but I, I could, I could get oh, the but gist. Get, get, get ready. Oh yeah. You, you, you don't need to watch Grey's Anatomy to get this yeah. at all. It's really well told. I'm only like one and a half episodes in, but so far I was like, oh, this is, this is really good. And then let's see. Um, uh, haven't da, 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 love is blind house of, of villains which is you know cute so far uh dark side of the dark side of reality tvs on vice tv i saw and that last night that you know what this tv here has vice tv vice yeah so <laughs> you can that. find it online as well but they have like episodes on old reality tv shows like kid nation the swan um, uh, surreal life. They have a upcoming one on housewives survivor, but it kind of takes you behind the scenes and it has usually like some, you know, like five or six pieces of good information. And they'll mm-hmm. have like first, you know, firsthand interviews with like Vicki Gunvolson and stuff like that. So I was kind of enjoying that as well, but what else should I be watching? Well, I was, I was going to tell you, you have to be watching love is blind, but you're already watching that yeah, and watching love is blind. That we have so many housewives on right now. I you I know. You, you you can't do anything else. You you Ryan can't do anything I know. else. No, yeah, you, like you can't I'm, do anything else. Well, do you find that you like you want to talk about everything and there's just not enough time or you don't have enough energy or to talk about it in a kind of a respectful way? Yeah, because you want to like dig in and it's so hard to dig into as much as there is out there right now. Well, people are constantly like, you got to cover this. You got to cover that. And I'm like, you guys, I wish I could. I wish I, I'm a, a again, a one man band. I wish I could. I wish I well, could, then but you, there's just not enough hours in the day. Pass, and that, yeah. And then, then it passes. That moment passes yes. Cause you're like, Oh, I, I still want to go back and uh, talk about the God. There's so what I'm thinking. There was a docu-series I wanted to talk about. And I'm like, Chimp crazy. And I missed, Chimp Crazy was one of them. So uh, what was that one from the end of 23, uh, Mother Love? That she drank like, oh, oil silver. Yeah, More, Mother Love. I had John Hill on to talk about that. And we did all, we like put on costumes and pretended like we were in the cult. I love, I love <laughs> that. Like, I was yeah. like, oh God, I would love to talk. You know, I would love to go on and talk about Menend- the, the Menendez story. I mean, I've, t- I've done Menendez stories, but I would love to dive into stuff like that. So I don't know, maybe in 25, but. And the Menendez thing, I did watch all of it as well. And, you know, I don't know. I think when you hear with the documentary, with their voices and everything, I'm like, I'm terrified of Lyle. Terrified. I, Still. That, that you, yeah, you guys, even if you didn't do the series, watch the documentary because it really, but you're right. There is a, I don't know if the word, there is a creepiness to it, but also you don't know if that's just from 35 years in prison. In prison, like right. When you, oh, right. Like watching, watching the artwork, uh, I forgot which one was like the artist. Like the artwork he did in prison, Eric, like Mm -hmm. that was weird. Like he did one of like uh, Edward Cullen from Twilight. He had like a painting of Edward Cullen and they're, they're not bad, but I was like, he's like super talented, I think. And I think that, you know, I think when they come out, you know, they'll, they'll have, they'll have a reality show and he'll be a famous artist. Now Lyle will probably murder somebody, but Hey, don't say we didn't warn you. One out of two ain't bad, but dancing with that. Somebody said that dancing, dancing with the stars is going to pick them up, you know, like if they get out, but that's what with Anna Delvey dancing with the stars. Oh, by the way, I'm also watching survivor and the golden bachelorette. I just remembered. Um, uh, but that's, they'll be on dancing with the stars eventually because they were just testing the waters with Anna Delvey on this season. Like I think gypsy Rose would have been on, uh, dancing with the stars if she didn't get pregnant. I think they're testing the waters on true crime and seeing if it can play in reality competition series. I yeah, I think Anna Delvey is one thing, and I think a double murderer is something else. You know what I mean? We'll yeah. see. We'll, we'll see. see. I mean, listen, we'll, we'll see. see. I mean, let crazier things have happened. Like, and we have changed a little bit as a society in how we view these things. So I mean, but at the end of the day, with the Menendez stuff, they still killed their parents. Like I think it right. might be justified, it might, but it still happened. And even they say that in the documentary, like we did this crime, we definitely did this crime. Yeah, yeah, they did it. Yeah, I mean, oh boy, 
All right, Ryan. Everybody knows where they can find you. You guys, it's Ryan yeah. Bailey. So yeah, good. Like, so uh, bad. Yeah. So bad it's good with Ryan Bailey. And you guys, listen, if you're following Ryan, can you follow me on Instagram too? At Pink Shade Pod. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just a third of you. Just a third of you oh can come God. over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not even that. Anyways, so yeah. Yeah. So bad it's good as the pod. Yeah. Just go check it out. And you guys, if you you probably already decided if you like me or not, but you know, give, give me another <laughs> shot. Give me another shot. That's all. That's all I ask. Look at Ryan. He's so lovable. Yeah. All right, shot. Ryan. <laughs> Everybody follow Ryan. Everybody go listen to his podcast, wherever you get your podcast and you have Patreon Bye, too, guys. right? You have Patreon yeah, as well? Pa- yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I do want to say uh, patreon.com forward slash so bad. It's good. And we just recapped the entire first season of Vanderpump rules <gasps> and it was hysterical. It was he's st- high hysterical. You want to talk joy. about sad realizing how little people change from 2013 to now, like yeah. the Jax Taylor of it all and the Stassi of it all, like that really set so many, so many ships into motion that first season. So you can find all of that. We got like, we got like 400 episodes that nobody's ever even heard on the main feed on that. So go check it out. Oh my gosh. You know, I was so hot for Jax that first season of Vanderpump Rules. Wow. He was, a, he, I mean, he was a, I mean, still is, but he was a great looking guy. Like a yeah. great looking guy. Yeah. Yeah. Even with all the nose jobs. So and then he looking. was telling Stasi, and he was like, yeah, well, you know, when, when like, I love you so much. I had, I had to go out and sleep with as many people that I could just to get away from the pain. And I was like, this is amazing. This is amazing television. She's like, you always told me you'd get my name tattooed. And he was like, I'll still do that. I'll still do it. I'll still do it. <laughs> He's got so many girls' names on his body. Like, <laughs> oh, anyway. anyways, classic dirt, classic story. Okay. Love it. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. Bye, guys.